Hello, and welcome to a Cloud Developer Channel. In the last video, I showed you how to use a JMeter recording feature. And today, what I'm going to show you is how to use uh, the thread group functionality in JMeter in order to be able to control and set up your tests for uh, different load tests. Uh, as an example, so in the last video, we did a recording where we used the, the normal thread group feature. And in here, you can see that you can perform a number of threads. You can do set up a ramp up time. You can set up a number of loops or iterations to run your tests. And then you can also schedule uh, those particular tests. What this doesn't allow you to do is things like being able to go from, let's say five users up to 10 users, up to a hundred users, all using the same test, at least not in a simple way. And uh, there's actually an ability to do that by using some plugins that uh, are available for JMeter. And I showed you in one of the first videos how to actually add that uh, plugin manager. So I'll show you real quick what, what we can do uh, with those plugins. So uh, as you can see, this is the test that we did in the last video. And I'll reuse this exact test um, in our video today. And so the first thing I'll show you is the plugins that I've gone ahead and downloaded using the plugin manager. Now in here, um, what I have already installed is the three basic graphs, five additional graphs, custom thread groups. And this is the one that uh, we're going to be looking at today, and it allows you to actually use these different thread groups. The one we're going to be using specifically is going to be the ultimate thread group, um, and it will give us some control over how do we want to perform uh, basically set up our load on our environment. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make sure that this is actually installed. You can do that by uh, going to available plugins and then here you can look for custom and then you, once you select it you can go ahead and apply the changes. It will restart JMeter and everything is going to be ready for you to use. Um, I also have a couple of other uh, plugins installed like the KPI versus KIP, KPI graphs. Um, and those can become useful uh, once you actually start executing, trying to read the results of your tests. So since I already have this installed, I'll go ahead and close this. So basically what we're going to do is in order to reuse this test, um, we're going to need to simply add to that other um, thread group. So you do that by right clicking on your test plan. We'll right click and then go to thread groups. And in here, I'll just select the ultimate thread group. And uh, this is uh, basically what it looks like. It gives you this grid up at the top and it allows you to add different rows. And as you can see, as I start adding rows, you'll see that it uh, takes the thread count that you want to have. And then it uh, by default configures the initial delay to zero, start up time to 30 seconds for each one, uh, hold load, basically how long does, it, uh, does the load keep getting executed? And then how long does it take for it to start ramping down? And um, what you can do is actually go ahead and start customizing this uh, for the you know for the needs that you have. So I'll go ahead and delete the first two rows first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with five users. And you can see the graph uh, updates right away. And this is useful for you to understand how your uh, load test is actually going to look like on the server. Then uh, we're going to go ahead and say you know, we want it to not wait uh, to start up. It's going to start up in, immediately. The startup time, we'll set it to five. So basically every um, every second is going to add another thread. And then it's going to execute, let's say, for 60 seconds. And then we'll um, let it finish in or ramp down in five seconds as well. Then I'll go ahead and copy this. So this basically uh, says that we're going to start up uh, or add additional five threads. The initial delay we're going to do is, um, let's say, for five seconds. So basically what is, well, or let's do 10 seconds. And what that's going to do is, in five seconds, actually is going to initiate the first five requests, and then wait for uh, five seconds, um, and then is going to add additional. So we'll do this. And you can see there's actually a difference um, of about, well, it's a combination. So it's zero initial delay plus five startup time. And it's, so basically it's offset. So it will wait for about five seconds as um, it actually starts up ramping up the other requests. So you can see that's why um, in here it's actually 10 seconds. Um, and then it starts actually ramping up once again for another five seconds. So we'll go ahead and uh, have it wait. And then it shuts down. 
Now you can also start adjusting these parameters here. So for example, you might want to uh, have the load test execute for um, for 65 seconds for this uh, second request, or if you keep it at 60, but maybe you want to say, uh, keep the other one going, the first one that started, and have it go for 65 seconds. So you can see what basically what this will do is it will um, actually run longer because uh, the, uh, the second test is actually um, waiting 10 seconds and then takes five seconds to fully ramp up. It executes itself for 60 seconds, but it, since the first test actually was already running for the five seconds um, ahead of it, basically you can see that it starts aligning to when it starts ramping down. So, and you can adjust these settings as you need to, but basically it gives you the ability to fine grain control how you want your test to start executing. So maybe you want to actually um, go up to uh, another, um, you know, by another 10 users, and maybe you want it to actually um, wait for about 15 seconds in this case. Um, and then you want it to only execute for 40 seconds. Now, and you can start looking at this graph and adjusting it the way you need it to. But keep in mind that this is actually a cumulative thread. So each row here will actually add another um, amount of threads to your overall test. So um, you have to make sure that it doesn't exceed the capability of the server you're executing the test from. So, and here we'll, um, we'll actually wait for 20 seconds. Um, startup time, it will go uh, pretty much right away. And then we'll only have this actually execute for about 30 seconds. And ramp down time uh, of 10 seconds. So, um, this is uh, pretty much how easy it is to actually use this thread group. It allows you to control this uh, pretty, um, pretty ro in a robust manner. So, and now if we actually want to uh, make sure that this is actually being executed, all you have to do is just simply drag uh, this uh, recording controller onto the ultimate thread group, and then um, you're ready to actually use it. Now, for the sake of the tests and the demo, I also like to actually disable the other thread group and keep it there, because in case I need to actually do a simple test, um, of this entire uh, web test. I can just simply drag this back into the thread group, enable it, disable this ultimate thread group, make the necessary adjustments to the actual test itself, validate it, and then put it back. And the reason that I do this is because when you actually do this more complicated test, that will actually uh, make it more difficult for you to look at the results because they're not going to be ordered in a way that will make sense. That's why I keep the thread group uh, in the original place. So, but now that we have everything set up, let's actually go ahead and save this and uh, try to run it and see what it looks like. And I'll click on this view results tree and hit run. And then you'll see that our um, test started executing. And you can also see that uh, on the right top corner, you'll see that uh, there's gonna be a total of 40 threads and you can see the ramp up time uh, or the, the threads actually ramping up one at a time. So uh, once it actually reaches the full 40 allocation of threads, um, it will execute for a period of time and then eventually uh, start actually ramping down. So now if we actually go back to our thread um, group, we can actually see that the total test execution should take no longer, uh, no long, no more than one minute and 20 seconds. So and you can see how long it already elapsed. And uh, you can also uh, see, um, you know, basically there, there's another feature in JMeter to be able to also see the response times by adding additional uh, listeners. And I'll show you how to set those up in a future video uh, so you can actually start reading the results of all these tests. So we'll, uh, we'll make sure that this actually completes. As you can see, it's actually already ramping down here. Um, so you can uh, make sure that it's actually working the way you need it to. So if we go back here, we can also see that the tests are still executing um, and then it should complete and there we go. So um, this is how you use the ultimate thread group um, and be able to actually uh, control the wrap pump and the ramp down functionality of your tests. If you have any questions, go ahead, uh, go ahead and leave your comments in the comment section below and I will talk to you in the next video.